welcome, welcome, welcome to the Smith and Jane sketchbook. There's another exciting opportunity, we think, to look at some old sketches in a new order. That's right. Over the next half hour, we're going to be sort of spooling back through some old videos, mm -hmm. back to when we were young and fresh-faced, in order to shamelessly wallow in the past. In fact, this whole series is entirely for the benefit of our mums. <laughs> Hello, Hello, Mum. Hi. Yeah. yeah, we're back on the telly. Have yes. You, have you remembered? Have you remembered to put the video on? The video. The video. Put it on now. Put it on. The video. Mm. Yeah. You didn't buy her a DVD recorder then? <laughs> was using that to record the other side. Oh right. <laughs> oh, <sorry. laughs> right. Hi, we were Soap up your end, by the way. Simply, um, <laughs> Eric, um, obviously, it, uh, it equalizes your graphics. <laughs> Never eat digestive biscuits in bed. We're over to the Olympic pool now and midway through the 100 metres final. Relay. Now, this was a surprisingly slow pace here, didn't Yeah, it? well, there's Bart, there's an Antigua. He does sound very strong. <laughs> Has political correctness had its day? We interview a leading puff. <laughs> Congratulations, Mr Stewart. It's a boy. <laughs> Nine pounds. Well, here's the ten. <laughs> for tonight, let's leave you with something for the ladies. <laughs> Oh, a minute and I'm laughing. Oh, I tell you. Oh. you probably noticed there's been a whole rash of these programmes, these sort of connections type mm. programmes mm. recently. Yeah. Well, I think this is because the public love to see how their favourite comedy programmes were made by an incestuous in crowd glad handing each other up the greasy pole. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, of course, we had those connections ourselves, didn't we? Did, we? Didn't yeah, you? yeah. For example, <coughs> many of our writers came from Not the Nine O'Clock News. Yeah, well, you can see them there, I think. You see Not the Nine O'Clock News, yeah. and then they went on to write Black Adder and Dead Donkey, uh, Who Dares Wins, and. Metal Mickey. That's right, Metal Mickey. <laughs> now, uh, now this is it. a lot of the actors actually came from Griff's old, um, old BBC radio crowd. Uh, oh, yeah, yeah, look at the top there. Look at Jimmy Marvel. Isn't that sweet? Yeah, lovely. He it. produced it, and then it went down through Smith and Jones, and they think it's all over. Clive Anderson and, and, and of course, Peter's friends. Mm. Yes, yes. Mm. Well, not everything they did was a success. No, but... no, no, no. I understand. No, no. But nearly everybody else involved in the entire series was someone Mel met down the pub. That's right. <laughs> See, there's old Harry. I the think old... he was in charge of catering, well, wasn't he? He, he, yes, was that's drag, right. he was a drag artist. He was, he was very, yes. Very and then there was the lovely Lisa, Gorgeous she used girl. to drive yeah. you around. That's and, right, yeah. and then was there the bloke who knew someone who lent us a horse for that horse. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Uh, sort of the earth. A really yes. great bunch. Yes, we just, we just couldn't get rid of them. <laughs> This is, this is a video recording of an interview that took place with Albert Henry Hall concerning a robbery at the National Midland Building Society on May the 1st, 1990. Present is PC Longman and myself... <laughs> and myself... <laughs> <laughs> 
Detective Sergeant Taplow. The interview took place at 1.33 p.m. on May the 1st, 1990. Now, Albert Henry Hall, I have read you your rights when you was arrested earlier, and you have understood them. Is that correct? <laughs> yes. Could you tell me where you was around last Tuesday, please, Mr Hall? In Sam Snooker Club. All right. <laughs> While you was there, did you not meet with Harold Bristow and Charles Henry Rayner? Look, I keep telling you, I was there. And I was with Harold Bristow and Charlie Rayner. I didn't even bloody know them. Did you not then leave the club in the company of Bristow and Rayner and proceed to the National Midland Building Society where the three of you committed an armed robbery? Pin that building society flag on me. You've got the right man. <laughs> While you was there, did you not meet with Harold Bristow and Charles Henry Ray? Looks like you got me fair and square. <laughs> I demand not see my f***ing solicitor. No, no. We're quite happy for you to call whoever you like. How's the tea? Fine, thanks. <laughs> Just about wraps it up. This interview is timed at ending at 1.35 p.m. precisely. WPC Edmonds, the bracelets, please. <laughs> right, who's the fruitcake and who's the tart? <laughs> Here's your ice cream. <laughs> yeah. Diary. Today, after years of failure, I have finally invented a pen that talks as I write. <laughs> <laughs> it's something that work right. I can't tell you about it because I'll be laughing about it. Of course, what are you talking about? You're obviously very upset. Of course, I won't laugh. <laughs> oh. I'm a victim of sexual harassment. <laughs> It's not funny. Harassment, you. It's not funny. What? It's not funny. What, what do you it's mean? not funny. My boss is a woman. My boss is a woman. She's sexually harassing me. Oh, right. She is threatening to sack me unless I give in to her demands. What demands? Come in on time and work harder. Well. <laughs> anyway, we did those characters from the head to head all those years, and then we never even gave them any names, no. did we, really? No. In the no. end, they were just. No. We never called them Wilf or Harry or anything no, like that. No, no, no. They've just written on the script as Mel and, Mel and Griff. Yeah. 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 Which is odd because, in fact, they're not entirely uh, similar to our characters, not you know, at all. because I'm, I don't think of myself as sort of particularly thick and sort of gormless. No, no, and I'm not, I'm not lazy and fat, am I? <laughs> <laughs> Let, let's watch some more sketches, shall we? Welcome to the third annual taxi drivers' convention. Would you please welcome our guest speaker, Hackney Carriage Driver number 12794, Mike Jennings. <laughs> Gentlemen, <laughs> what's going on with the traffic in London today? I can't take any more. We're never going to be rescued. We've been drifting for days. I'm going to make a swim for it. <laughs> 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 Yes, sir. You calm, you calm. Look, I know we've been through a lot. We've been through a lot, but we can get through a lot more. As long as we stick together and we keep our spirits up. Padre. Yes, sir. Why don't you lead us all in a song? All right, sir. All right, then. After me. We're all going to die. We're all going to die. We are to die, we're all going to die. Is your child playing with death? That's the question parents all over Britain have been asking since the Consumer Standards Authority uncovered three potentially lethal toys on the market. Here with me is Alan Standard to talk about the problem. <laughs> now, Alan, just how dangerous are these toys? Well, I don't wish to be alarmist, but these toys could harm younger children. I see, and you brought a few along with you today. That's right, yes. Now, this looks like an ordinary football. Well, it does, except I don't know whether the camera can get this, but if you see, if I apply pressure here... Mm -hmm. <laughs> and that's 
statements, is it? Well, it could cause problems. Right? say that was a very companionable squid to have down your kicks. <laughs> uh, it was fine, I mean, until I got to well, the deep I, end I and then it that, tried to hang on. I yeah, go on. Yeah. <laughs> um, actually, I must say that Griff, of course, frankly, doesn't have to use public baths anymore, do you? Because I, I suppose almost everybody knows that he has his own swimming pool. What do you mean everybody knows <laughs> I have my own swimming pool? You've got your own swimming pool. Yes, yes, but I, I don't charge admission, do I? <laughs> What exactly can I do for you, Mr. Pritchard? I'm looking for a completely new type of bank account. I see. <laughs> I want a current account that pays interest. But if I go overdrawn, I don't expect to pay any bank charges. When I come into the bank, I expect all the cashiers to stand up and say, Good morning, Mr. Pritchard. <laughs> I want you to stop raising your eyebrows in that condescendingly smug manner. And that tie will have to go. I want use of your house at weekends and your car anytime. <laughs> I want a plumber who comes when he says he will and an erection that lasts slightly longer than two and a half minutes. <laughs> I want to request my mother, who's 73 and doesn't get out as much as she used to, love your mum, and three extra pinters. And I want world peace, an end to all poverty and starvation, and a speedboat. <laughs> yes, I think that can be arranged, no problem. <laughs> Thank you very much. Now, can you let go of my bollocks, please? <laughs> Take care. Thank you. sure everybody would completely have got that because that sketch you see was just a reference to the fact the end of the Benny Hill show uh, they used to undercrank the film and there was all these characters running around but it was the uh, and the banjo going and they were all rushing around in you know fast motion <laughs> are you gonna explain all the jokes this evening or just like... <laughs> now people knock Benny Hill for being politically incorrect. Well, not me. I don't know. I, I, I just want to say, I was a great I was, fan. I was, fan. A, I was a bigger fan than you. I was a huge fan of Benny I Hill. Was I, was, I was such a big fan. I, I, I used to chase women in frilly knickers around my garden as well. Yeah, <laughs> I know. I know. I did, yeah. But then we always did like sort of traditional forms of entertainment, mm. didn't we? Yeah. <clears throat> now, here is another copper bottomed, silver titted example. <laughs> One of the most difficult tasks facing a murderer is what should he do with the body? Should he hide it or destroy it? <laughs> Whatever he does could prove crucial in the detection of his crime. In their office in Scotland Yard, Inspector Bribeasy and Sergeant Porno are busy catching up on some important paperwork. <laughs> uh, why do yours always go further than mine, Porno? <laughs> <laughs> I think it helps if you fold it into the shape of an aeroplane first, sir. Yes, perhaps you're right. <laughs> Fly's been pestering me all afternoon. You want the newspaper, sir? Yes, good idea. <laughs> <laughs> no, 
guy's no good, I'm gonna have to kill it. Give me the gun. I think you winged it, sir. Yeah, I'm Michael Thomas, Great Britain. Big lad. He's putting everything into that, but oh no, that I no, that's a bit low. It's fading now. I think he's unlike. Oh! <laughs> but it is adding something there, and oh, no, no, he's back the other way. And wait, 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 no! Now he's coming up to the 90-yard line. Is he gonna cross it? Is he gonna cross it? He's over! The Meter line. This is fantastic. This is an opportunity in British athletics like we've never seen, and he's down, and it's a record. Well, that's that's quite unexpected. <laughs> well, what do you think of that? Right, Sergeant. This is the procedure. <laughs> First, you announce that you are an armed policeman. Then you tell the villain that this is his one and only warning, and then if he still refuses to give himself up, you open fire. You got that? Give it a try. Basically, that's very sound, Sergeant. Uh, the order was slightly wrong. But we'll that's... Try, I'll try it again, sir. I'll try, I'll try it again. Why not? This is an arm warning, and I am your last policeman! <laughs> that is the best idea I have ever heard. I'm very excited. I am very, very excited. If we put even one millionth of that idea into action, and I'm not joking here, I'm not joking here at all, we could turn this into the biggest company in the world. I'm not just talking about this world. I'm talking about every world. Yeah. You do your sums on that. Uh, what's your name again? Gleason. Right. I like you, Gleason. I like you a lot. You're very attractive, but that's not why I like you. Do you know why I like you, Gleason? Because you've got balls. Not many people have got balls like you have, Gleason. You've got big, hard balls, and I like that in a man. I've got balls like yours, Gleason. I've got a proposition for you. you. Ready? Let's bang our balls together, see if it sounds like money. I'm not pretending it's going to be easy, Gleason. If you don't pull your weight, I will make you wish you had never been born. I'll hunt you down, Gleason. I'll stalk you. I'll rip your eyes out with my teeth. I'll bust those big bollocks of yours that you're so proud of. You can run, but you can't hide, Gleason. So, what's the answer? We're going to go together on this? Are we ready for this, Gleason? Are we going to do this together, Gleason? Well, Mr. Carter, I can't promise anything until I've interviewed the other applicants. <laughs> I, I just wanted to say that looking back at all those sketches, actually, I thought you were excellent in them. Oh, thanks, mate. Thanks no, for right on the button. Thanks. Really, really good in everything. Very, very good. Well, oh, thank you very yeah, much, Chris. Really thanks. good. I just thought I was terrible in some of them there. <laughs> you, you certainly were, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Yes, well, I mean, that's honest. It's obviously well, the quality of honesty that's sort of kept us together. I'm I mean, really, really, really terrible, to be honest, you know, in some of the stuff. Um, dreadful, yeah. dreadful, I mean, absolutely appalling, you know. Uh, unwatchable, in fact, some of it. <laughs> well, it's an overrated quality honesty, isn't it? I think so. <laughs> Are you ready to order? Yeah, yeah. I'll just have the uh, sushi. I mean, mm. that's... Raw fish. Is that all right for you? Yeah. Oh, yeah, that's fine. <laughs> yeah, uh, a skewer fried squid in a sea urchin sauce. Yes, sir. I'll have some of that then. Squid? Yeah, that's like a fish with legs. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Do you know what? I'll have the oven baked crab's lungs. <laughs> and some uh, octopus suckers with a uh, frog's paw sauce. <laughs> Only make mine raw, will you? 
Actually, you know what I really want? I think I'm going to have a simple boiled shark's nose. <laughs> Can you serve that on a bed of cold dolphin's lips? Very good. <laughs> I'll have a raw monkey. <laughs> a whole raw monkey's brain tossed in monkey juice, garnished with monkey's ears and sprinkled with tufts of old monkey's pubes. <laughs> Anything to drink? Yeah, I'd like a pint of monkey spit. <laughs> in a straight glass. <laughs> With a lemonade top. You know what I really want? Shattered kneecap of emaciated mountain goat. <laughs> I'd like that smeared with bat sick and stuffed up a sperm whale's blower. <laughs> and I'd like the whole thing wrapped in an ox bladder and served on a bed of rancid dog's tongues, served with a runny beaver sweat sauce. <laughs> Twice. Thank you. With a wasp, frog, bait, horse, ant. Right, gentlemen, set the meal for two. <laughs> Back in the 60s and 70s, you know, those rock concerts. God, dear. <laughs> and the days, because I, I was a hippie. You never would, would you? Oh, yeah, I was. <laughs> you, you should have seen me yeah. in my crushed velvet loon pants. Oh, yeah. Me, <laughs> me, uh, me, uh, me, me psychiatric uh, yeah. nylon uh, cat pants <laughs> and, uh, and the old Indian uh, beads. Yeah, oh, it's great. What a decade. What a dickhead. Uh, <laughs> Thou shalt not kill. Check! Thou shalt not steal. Jack! Thou shalt honour thy mother and thy father. Jack! Thou shalt not commit adultery. Yes! Thou shalt not covet thy neighbour's ox or his ass. Damn! <laughs> I had thou shalt not wank. I'm <laughs> this week. Oh, my mate, just a bit of fun, isn't it? Which means that this week no one has got the commandments right. So next week will be a rollover week. <laughs> Did we ever say that then? Wank? Wank. Dickhead? I Wank. don't know. That was quite a robust use of language, wasn't it? It certainly was. These days, of course, swearing on television is rather commonplace, to be honest, particularly if you're a TV chef, you mm. know, or, uh, you know, I don't know, a pop star doing a charity show or something. Yeah. But I like to think that we simply did it to offend. <laughs> <laughs> I think this may be a Van Gogh. My God, I think it is. Um, how much did you want for this? Oh, it's lovely, this one, isn't it? Yeah. Uh, 80 million pounds. <laughs> I went down to Wally Street yesterday. <clears throat> oh, yeah? Yeah, down, you know, where the clinics are, don't <laughs> Oh, yeah. <laughs> I go down there quite often, actually. Do you? Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah to the, uh, you know, the artificial, uh, I'm in seminary. <laughs> sperm bank, you know. Because they've actually got they've got the biggest collection of sperms in the country down there. <laughs> you go you go down there and have a look at them, do you? <laughs> no, no. I mean, I, no. I mean, I go to stick some in. Oh. I'm a, I'm a I'm a donator. Oh, oh. How, how do you do that, then? <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, I mean, how come? <laughs> no, I, I'm, I'm, I mean, how, how, does it, how does it come about that you, <laughs> you, go, you go down there, then? Oh, yeah, well, like, there's a lot... I mean, there's a lot of women in the world. Right? Yeah, right, yeah. And a lot of them, for, you know, for various reasons, yeah. They, uh, they can't get pregnant, no. see? Because no. their husbands haven't got it in them, see? <laughs> well, well, not at all. <laughs> well, not as much as I have. No. <laughs> and obviously, yeah. they, you know, they need a virile, manly sperm to be <laughs> stuck in there and do the business like Yeah. Well. <laughs> I'm not being too technical for you, am I? No. <laughs> how, how, how many of these women... Oh, there, then. Hundreds. <laughs> Hundreds. Well, you, you're more virile than I thought you was. <laughs> 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 but 
when, when, when you go down there, right, just do the sperm bank thing, do they, do they give you a choice of woman? <laughs> oh, no, no, I mean, no, I mean, I don't see the woman. <laughs> what, so, so it's like at home, then? <laughs> don't you worry? About what? Oh, about this new law. It like, gives um, children the right to find their biological father. Yeah, of course I'm worried. Of course I'm worried. But I mean, my seed, I have to repopulate most of South London. Yeah. <laughs> you, you caused a sort of population explosion, didn't you? Yeah, too right, mate. Single-handed. Sometimes I tell you. <laughs> Sometimes. <laughs> I see mm. a little baby. Yeah. Being pushed by in a buggy. Yeah. And I think how much it looks like me, and I start to wonder. Yeah. Know. They all look like you, though, don't they? <laughs> you know, not much hair and sort of pink dribbly skin and, you know, <laughs> spit all down their clothes and all that stuff. Yeah. You know. Mind you, because, you know, the whole, this whole donating thing now yeah. is a lot more complicated, you know. Yeah. Cause, oh, yeah, yeah. Because what they do is they, they, they isolate your DNA. Yeah. And then they screen it. In a cinema? No. <laughs> no, no, no. They run it through a computer. You oh, know. Right. Very complex thing, yeah. you know, and then they, then they grade it. Right. How, mm. did, how did they do that, then? Well, it's a bit like milk. Is it? <laughs> yeah. I mean, like, you know, your lowest uh, down the bottom there is your, uh, is your skimmed. Yeah. Then you've got your semi-skimmed, full cream. Yeah. And at the top, you've got me. <laughs> Yakult. <laughs> yeah, sort of banana yogurt. Yeah. <laughs> <sighs> thank you. Thank, thank you for watching. Don't forget, you can still catch us live at the little theatre upstairs behind the pub on the green in Doncaster on Tuesday night. Yes, we're supporting the Mr Blobby comeback tour. <laughs> Good night. Yeah.